Tim's pretty much the only guest we have on that isn't uh, like ever sh like offended when we make fun of women. It's like <laughs> every we every have a guest, we kind of ruin their reputations. I don't think your reputation with the ladies could be ruined any more than it is. Tim. <laughs> My right. I mean, the reputation with the ladies is predicated on laughing at that sort of thing. And it's, it's what, high. What is what is your split on YouTube? Because ours is like, it started off, it was like 60, 40. Now it's like 7, 80, 20. 70, oh, I wonder 20, why, 25. Anthony. <laughs> what, what is our split? You mean um, man yeah, and like the, the women? Ratio yeah. male to woman. Like when you look in analytics. 60% male. Basically. I think it's 60, 40. It's pretty high. We have we have some pretty devoted ladies out there. <clears throat> that's pretty, that's pretty, pretty interesting. I'm looking at some of the oh, yeah. comments already, and it's it's so funny because all right, so Tim Tim was on with Tim Pool on Friday on the Culture War with Rolo Tomasi, and they were it, it, they're they're gearing up to have this debate on patriarchy versus red pill, essentially. Right now, the way I see it, because I do talk to a lot of young guys, I'm at work a lot, and I'm constantly being shown clips from the Andrew Tate crowd, and I see a lot of young guys are in a strange time. It's nothing like when we grew up, when we were looking for a, a girl to date or anything. Like, these kids are all on Tinder and looking for girls online. Most of the date, most of the dating world is like, all the guys who are the top earners and best looking are scooping up 90% of the women. So you get a lot of, you get a, you get a lot of like uh, really upset young men who become incels and then they gravitate towards this manosphere thing. And it, to me, it's almost like they are preaching like a false gospel of uh, towards these young guys where all of their ends are natural ends. And you're, mm -hmm. you seem to be the only guy who has gotten himself into this conversation in a position to actually argue Christianity on, on a, on a, on like an actual in-depth conversation. It's like, I, I'm just watching everybody else play around with it, but you're the only one who seems to have crossed that barrier to have these conversations with these guys. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm the, the online patriarchy godfather and and remember this involves researching and writing a book which was tortured it was a tortured process from i think when i announced it on pints with aquinas in 19 summer of 19 to um because it's such a tortured subject the book didn't come out until 2021 with lots and lots of drama um yeah. some of it behind the scenes some of it very in front of the scenes and it finally came out in 2021 and it um it it shot out of the cannon not with a bang but with a whisper and, and we we sold a, a good amount of books there there wasn't a problem there that was mainly because of my channel but there was no controversy and then steph's book came out and man that thing has outsold mine so much yeah yeah self-pubbed version and that that was just tons of controversy because steph's like the the um female clarence thomas you know they, they they think she's the 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 house woman um so that that yeah it's been great 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 for sales and they just you know that's the story of how that's gone and i wrote a fourth book after the case for patriarchy came out in 22 or something uh don't go to college and i was just like okay i'm on to stumping this book now and and plugging it and my co-author went on tucker carlson and that was really cool but um the coolest the coolest thing that's happened over the last five years the most unexpected thing was pearly things yeah. and she says some of the the silliest things some of the silliest shit you've ever heard now but last may june whenever she came out starting her her ascent was saying some really important critiques of the ladies that that brought attention back to this in mid 2023 
it just became the issue for conservatives. It's the attack on the family. It's the attack on on males. And um, she, she's put a spotlight on it. And that spotlight hasn't left. And I've told my friends who are in the brass at Daily Wire and at Tucker Carlson's network, um, look, this is going to be the issue. People people don't believe in elections anymore. That, that yeah. ship has sailed. No one cares it's an election year. Intersexual dynamics is where it's at. And there's one set of solutions. And it's Roman Catholicism. And like so much else in Roman Catholicism, we're most bad of all the Christian sects. We're most badly infiltrated by feminism. You know, trad, Rome, uh, Novus Ordo. It's all it's all feminist. But we're the only sect of Christianity out there that has no divorce. This is what I told Rollo behind the scenes. Yeah. You don't like divorce. It's, it's Catholicism. Protestants have it. Orthodox have it. Jews and Muslims have it. It's a contract. It's a Jewish contract. You know, it's a well, that's the contract. that's the irony of this whole conversation is these young guys are going into the manosphere where you have a whole bunch of Muslims and Jewish guys giving them advice advice on what they should do about the problems of feminism. You have Pearl says a lot of the correct diagnosis, like the diagnosis of the problem, right? But her solutions are getting more and more absurd as Retarded. time goes on, right? Like, and it started yeah. around like July of this year. It just, you know, she was at first like, you know, nailing all the all the problems, but she was like, she just seems to be on this downward trajectory in her solutions yeah. lately and just tanking on Matt. How do you think Knowles did in his conversation with Berlin? Good. I mean, <clears throat> compared against uh Clavin talking to her, he just he just seemed like a the the trad con or the the conservative feminist that she expected to confront clavin clavin seemed like that Knowles did really well and i think was astounded by some of the things i've been astounded by with i know pearl behind the scenes and you know we're, we're we're friendly with her uh staff nick myself andrew and um andrew wilson and his wife rachel we're, we're all friends friendly with her we kind of tried to direct her away from you know poo-pooing marriage and, and becoming the first lady of the red pill and she, she's um repudiated that so that's that's yeah. fine um Knowles Knowles said a, a lot of um the things I would say and again Knowles is truly and really a patriarchist I think he's the only one there um of the talent at Daily Wire you, you see the difference if you watch the Clavin Pearly yeah. interview and then you watch it back to back with the the I, Knowles I, I think he could have conceded more to her Right, with, I do too. I do too. I do too. That's the one way I would have differed. Yeah, I think he could have conceded more to her. I think he could have said, "Yeah, yeah. all right, there aren't many marriageable women. Like, they really, you really have to take your role as as a husband these days so seriously." And a couple of things you point out. All right, so the the, the Tim Pool appearance, I found Tim. It's so strange. I used to love Tim Pool. Like a, a couple of years back, I always watched his stuff, and he just seems to be just repeating the same things over and over. I see like somebody's like, yeah, but women skateboarding. It's like, he gets on like one thing and just goes over and over. And he kept interrupting you. It was like, you were sitting in this room and the, and the, the elephant in the room is that Tim pool is with a chick who he's not married to trying to knock her up and start a family, but he doesn't want to get married. So you were already in a two against one situation, even if he was pretending to be the man in the middle, but it, the whole conversation, I think you guys got bogged down too much in the sports thing. I think that's a really good point. Like, like, because I listened to it with my, with my wife in the car and um, it was funny because you were like talking about cheerleading. Like my wife was a cheerleader growing up, you know, Base. I, Base. I, I have, I have uh, friends who are probably going to get upset with me when they see this, but um, ha that Base. have their daughters Base. in wrestling. And I have like one of my, one of my close friends, Let's his daughter marry up, uh, marry, uh, wrestle boys. And like, I had a blowout with him over this. That's great. Like, Bro, you're letting boys grope your daughter. Like, are you out of your mind? Like, it was like a very tense argument that I got. In, but you were talking like the whole beginning was basically just like setting women up to be com combatants. Like, it's, it's a strange role that we put young girls in these days. Yeah. Remember when I was talking to Tim about this and, and it, it, the conversation did go a little long just because of all he self contradicted so baldly when he was like oh yeah girls can't skateboard you know the best girl skateboarders are no better than like fifth grade uh 
male skateboarders and i was like yeah you know the olympic female soccer team lost to like fifth grade boy i mean come on we don't need all this and then i shared the story of karsten brash in tennis which no one really likes tennis anyway and wnba is always 28 seasons out of 28 is in the red i mean everyone knows so it's it's such yeah. a snore but then he contradicted himself i don't know if he got a ping when your channel is that large you just have all these um bosses that tell you what they, I, I don't know what it was but he started the hand started kind of he started trying to raise the hand and then he was like well i think they should and i'm like everyone in the chat was like you just said you that, yeah, you, so we, that you agreed with him yeah it was so you know? weird how he did that like you were he was so on board with you and then all of a sudden he was like oh wait i said something offensive to and i'm going to alienate my female audience you know and i look that's an important conversation i just felt like that segment got bogged down too long and then it like you were doing the conceding to Rolo because you want to let him know, just like I was saying, Knowles should have conceded more to Pearl. But then as soon as the disagreements came in, like Tim kept jumping in and not letting you make your points. It was it was a little frustrating to watch. I was frustrated for you. Well, behind the scenes, the story is um and roll people, people that know Rolo and you know, the, the, the red pill and red pill soft people were like, okay, he's he's saying he agrees with you 85%. He never says this with the trad cons. Um, he, he doesn't want to debate. He wants to just glom on to, I mean, he was just dovetailing with everything I said. And he was saying, oh, we yeah. agree. We agree. I don't, he didn't want to do a debate, um, which is, you know, okay, I'll, I'll leave it there. He, he didn't want to debate. <laughs> uh, we are going to hopefully do a follow-up debate online, probably on Zuby's channel. And I, I'm just going to say, look, enough of the, you kept hearing me say we, we were just we're agreeing too much. Let's let, there's a lot yeah, of, it wasn't a debate. Place. It was like, I wanted to hear where you guys clash because the, 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 all right. Even the one thing you pointed out, it was like, okay, well look, if the divorce is this big and you guys are talking so much about how women can take half your stuff. It's like, yeah, okay. The marriage contracts suck. They're, you know, they everything is geared against men. That's true. But you as a man have so much of an ability to shape your marriage. And there's little things you could do. One of them is just spending five minutes a day praying with your family. Like the, the success rate of taking that one step drastically changes the equation and makes it completely obsolete to the marriage statistics. They specifically asked me, all right, all right, Christian guy, what, what can a, a man do to take a real stranglehold over his marriage and, and own the agency and reduce the odds of getting a divorce? And I said, oh, I'm so glad you asked. Um, the recent statistics in like 2012 or something verified a study that had been done in the middle 90s when the divorce rate was its highest. Uh, exact same kind of result or, or highly equivalent result. Your chances of getting a divorce if you pray together for a short amount of time a day, I'm not sure if it was seven minutes or what, are one out of 1,152. So that means yeah. that um, uh, uh, 1,151 over one. 1,152 odds of a successful marriage if all you do is pray together for you know seven or ten minutes a day and they didn't like they didn't like this because the 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 raison d'etre of the red pill is the divorce question which is oh half of all marriages end in divorce should we end marriage? and this is why I say look Andrew Tate has CIA connections Myron Gaines was in the department of Homeland Security. Pearl's mom was like UN Women's Battalion or something. I don't know. There, I don't. I have no extra info aside from that. Um, but but the Tate father was there. It seems like a Hegelian false dialectic that that they're arguing for the kind of Malthusian population control that the feminists are. Yeah, that, well, that's that's exactly. So even if there's not some direct correlation between the 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 deep state they're pushing the same agenda that is being pushed in the algorithms no matter what so it's like th they act like they're combating f f like feminism but they're not they're just it's like the male version of feminism it's mm -hmm. just complete the, like the, the answer to feminism is just complete debauchery and degeneracy right so you have these guys telling you go go make money go go get yourself in shape and then bed a bunch of women now, what they don't talk about much, and I heard you mention this in your uh, C-Mask show, which I don't mean to steal your thunder from it, but there was such good points that you guys were making. It's like, these guys act like they got 50 women under their belt. They don't talk to you that they're hanging out at the bar waiting for the last 
animal to stay in the bar that's willing to go home with them. None of them tell you, like, because you, if you talk to guys who did that lifestyle, any celebrity talks about it. And whenever you hear conversion stories of people like that, they'll tell you the empty feeling you feel after being with somebody on a one night stand type of thing. Like, you want to throw up after that. But this is what they're telling men is the goal. It's a very strange thing that they're doing. More self-contradictory squarely than that is the fact that they say the way to guard against the specter of divorce and unhappiness is suicide, poverty, having your children ripped away from you is by having serial one night stands. You try to get a number of 50 bodies on your body count. So sick. And here's the thing. I showed them a graph. I've showed it to Pearl. I've showed it to all of them now that demonstrates amply that if you have a body count compared against a virgin, you know, two virgins get married and their their odds of divorce are, you know, coefficient or whatever uh, baseline at three or four bodies, either partner has three or four bodies in their history. The odds go up by 300 percent by the time you hit five sexual partners in your past body count. It goes up to like 400 percent. It goes all the way up to like 600% by the time you get to 12 bodies. And this graph didn't even well, account well, for, well, for just, 50. Well, okay, so just look common sense at this. If you think nothing of marriage, to sleep with somebody before marriage, you will think nothing of marriage after you're married, right? It's just common sense. Like whoever, if you're sleeping with someone before marriage, you don't have a high opinion of marriage. Marriage is just a piece of paper. That's the That's the logic that follows from that you just you think marriage is just a piece of paper so what makes you think when you get that piece of paper your behaviors and your thoughts are going to change somehow you think you're going to be monogamous after running around and living that lifestyle is absurd certainly i mean a, a virtue is not an act but a habit you practice how you play so it's it's open it's always been stupid advice for masculine influencers to tell young men to have premarital sex which is lame because of of this this brute moral fact in human existence that you practice how you play and if you develop habits which pull you left of a and you won't know that once you're married you want to be heading right of a then then you're you're doing something that's squarely counterproductive to your ultimate end if if you admit that i kind of still want to get married um uh, same same thing with um contraception before or during marriage um, enhances the odds of divorce, which is again their supposed north star, their pole star for yeah. um, making all their prescriptions. Well, that that um, increases the odds of divorce between 160 and and 200 percent, depending on the types of um, the contraception involved. Uh, there's some other stuff. Uh, you know, you could go through um, the 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 prawn the prawn usage. It has a similarly yeah. uh, diminution um, effect, a similar similar diminution. So. All the things that they are standing for are um, in explicit contradiction of what they say they care about. It was just, it was, it was fun to talk. I, I, I do think Rolo's in in a, a way sincere. Um, I mean, he he was fun to have him adding to all my points at the beginning, but I'm just like, okay, halfway through, you heard me saying, let's we we agree about the problem. You know, yeah. the problem in society is that that it's gynocentric literally the matrix if you've ever seen that movie is that everything is geared toward egalitarianism between men and women in terms of benefits and non-egalitarianism in terms of burdens men still carry the the burdens um and yet they're they're trying to make women think that they are equal and they're not they're not equal in rank and the perfect example of this is the all-star game first ever all-star game where steph curry was shooting against some some lady who wasn't even shooting a basketball she was shooting yeah. literally a, a smaller sized orb like a volleyball um, <laughs> as if it were like a ball yeah it's like this that's just yeah. the odds um um are stack up but they're trying to say oh she got within this many shots. It was close. They were counting that as basketballs. It's like throwing a softball instead of a baseball and calling it the same sport. That's society. And once you get red pilled, remember, um, like summer of TNT, everyone was saying red pilled about the Latin Mass and about Pope yeah, Francis yeah, yeah. and the Saint Gallen Mafia. Once you get red pilled about something more basic, more fundamental, more actually interesting to our existence, that oh my gosh, the fundamental attack on the family that Sister Lucy talked about in the third secret of fatima this is all about this gynocentrism 
where um, women will be taught to hate men. They'll be taught to be inadequate men. And everyone will be taught that essentially we're really the same thing, men and women. Yeah. And, and we're not radically different. We're not like opposites. And therefore, every then all of your guests who are supposedly like Catholics are offended that you're just like, yeah, women, women can't drive, women can't do this, women can't do that, like with any proficiency. <laughs> they're like, well, but they're supposed to be egalitarian. You're that's they'll chuckle like it's naughty. It's like, I'm not, it's not naughty. Women are just women are, are beautiful and amazing um, when they are properly ordered. They're not men. They're not men. Yeah, they're just not men. Dude, it's so funny because, so, all right, so look, my wife comes from a very traditional home. My mother-in-law stayed home. My, I come from a very traditional home. My mother stayed home. We were at, and this started, this started a, a, a freaking fight at my in-laws. I told it on air a while back, but um, we're all, it was like a Christmas dinner or something, and we're sitting down, and they ask my 15-year-old daughter, what, do, what are you going to go to school for? Like, what do you want to do with your life? She goes, I want to be a mom. I want to start a family. And they were so shocked by this. Like and you're talking about every one of my sisters in law stay home with the kids. These are all like tradition minded women who were shocked that my daughter wasn't thinking about college and wanted to start a family. And yeah. it turns into an argument where I get into it and I'm like, I'm like, there's no scenario where the conversation derives into me saying there's no scenario where a man can make less money than his wife and not feel inferior and all this. And it turns out my my brother-in-law's sister was there, who's the breadwinner of the home. And it turned into this whole war. And everybody was mad at me. And, but yeah, it's just amazing that even people who are in that conservative upbringing and have more traditional values are still shocked by just common sense logic. It's not, though. It's really not. It's not amazing. This is the fundamental lie at the heart of society. It, once you get your head in to, to all your Anthony, Rob, you know, your, your entire audience, once you wrap your head around the proposition and you verify its veracity, you verify its truth, that society that they figured out, they, you know, who's the they, well, that, that, that's something we'll have to talk about on, on another channel. But, <laughs> but the they, the opponents of Christianity, figured out the most fundamental way of disrupting society, subverting um, Christendom, is to make women hate men and men resent women because the women now hate them and the women act so badly, yeah. um, is through gynocentrism. Just prop them up, tell like, um, like, you know, like Michael Scott at his birthday party, the way they describe it in the office, like a six-year-old at the birthday party, treat them like they're, they're, they're men. Um, treat them like there's no difference between men like hardwired using shadow play on the wall like like book you know book six of plato's republic trick men and women into thinking that there's no difference between men but do, do fix the games you know like a like a, a circus game where it's rigged where the women are, are winning a lot of the time and so everyone even even conservatives People say this as if they're shocked. Even traditionalists are like, they don't see that society's gynocentric. Um, well, if you can pull off that clever bit of, wish, of witchcraft, then of course, even, even right-wingers are going to be like, well, you, you can't say that. You can't say yeah. women are bad dry. You can't say women are bad at chess. You can't say women are bad at sports. You can't say women are bad at all, all these male things. And then you're just like, well, I mean, women are amazing at being at home and making it the most pleasant. I mean, my favorite person on planet Earth is my wife. And I don't just mean like, oh, because she like makes you dinner. Well, yeah, she does make me dinner, but she's just the coolest and the best and the nicest person out there. And and, and she yeah. and like really, really just fun because she knows what a woman is. And I know what a man is, and neither that doesn't mean either of us is the perfect woman or man, but we do have those models. It's not any of the other female saints or any of the male saints. It's Mary and Jesus. And something I've been saying lately about Cabrini is, well, a lot of the female saints are kind of good models for religious women. I said this to Leo Severino yeah. on the phone. But Mary is the ultimate and perfect model for women because she's, she's a mom. She's yeah. a, a barefoot and pregnant mom. And that's what women need to have. When they, they get confused by looking at all these religious women saints, extricating from religious women saints, like the girl boss stuff, and not extricating the lifestyle. She's, you're going to go home, watch Cabrini, and just become a girl boss. That that's, doesn't apply. You need to look at yeah. a Virgin Mary, what <clears throat> she did. Perfectly silent, perfectly submissive, 
perfectly ex um, receptive rather than expressive, you know, all this stuff. And man, then you can, you can make just a, a really, really happy life for yourself without a lot of money, without a lot of luxury. Well, you pointed something out that I think is so important, man. So I'm I'm always, whenever I talk to, to people, like you pointed out that you and Steph have fun together. Like, I don't think, especially if you're young and married, I don't think you guys understand how important it is that you remain a fun husband to your wife and the wives remain a fun wife to their husbands. Like my wife and I will just go and do little things alone together because you really do have to remember that you guys are friends because i've seen so many couples they get married and they just become roommates and they this it's just you're just a roommate at that point it's like you still have to remain attractive to each other you still have, there's so many things that you have a, a, a like a duty to your spouse to keep that marriage as friendly and where you like each other still Absolutely. Oh, I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't want to like when we give guys dating advice in because we run this matchmaking service. that has got all these young um, engaged people actually in the first nine months where we have all these engagements and we do will and myself give advice to the men if they're if they've had a, a bad match or two. Yeah, you know, do this. Don't do that. The most important thing on a date on a first date is blank i mean like give give anyone that quiz trads will be like oh talking about how many kids you want to have like yeah. no no back <laughs> up nope i'm oh, talking about jesus nope that's not it it's being cool in the other person's yeah. eyes because cool is a, a surrogate term it's fungible and it for, for for men it means just whatever that composite substratum is that means sexually attractive or yeah. a woman and vice versa and it's different things men are from mars women are from venus you just want to be sexually attractive to each other it's really really fundamental to the polarity that keeps you tightly bonded you have to be sexually attracted to each other and yeah dude i wait i i gotta cut jump in there because i i'm i know a, a young catholic guy i can't say who it is but he like him and i were talking and he's like He's like, I'm, I'm kind of finding it because I'm going to bring up something you said that was like you caught a lot of crap for, but I was kind of on board with it. Um, so he's like, dude, I'm having a hard time finding a, a, a girl in the trad world because some sometimes they go so overboard with the modesty stuff. It's to the point where they make themselves unattractive. Yeah. He's like, and it's like a little bit too much. Like they're, they're, they think they're not even allowed to show any bit of being attractive to somebody. And it's like, how do you even know? if there's any chemistry between you. So I said to him, I'm like, I don't know, maybe it's better to grab a Novus Ordo chick or maybe it's better to go grab a, a Protestant chick and convert her, you know? <laughs> because I can't, look, I know that's a controversial mm -hmm. thing, marrying outside of your, but I really do think it it's works for men, not women, because a, a wife will follow her husband's lead, right? So when I married my wife, she was Lutheran. She winds up converting and following my lead and now she goes to the you know traditional mass i mean all that stuff but i do think if you're a man you can bring a girl from an you know i wouldn't say find a muslim girl but you know a girl who's already in love with jesus and just needs to be taught the faith is 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 a good good approach i would say yeah heavens no not a muslim or a jew <laughs> I mean, convert if you can but my my specific advice was um to have them convert before you get married not hmm. not that yeah. uh, not that this yeah. is a prerequisite yeah. or anything like that but that that's w when i said that and uh, so yeah i got i just got so many emails from guys like this is the best advice and well you, it is against uh, yeah i'm not i'm not saying to marry a, a protestant chick i'm saying what tim's saying find a chick from somewhere and just you know like you do don't you i don't think guys realize how much authority they have in, in in relationships like i think a lot of guys are hesitant to to really embrace the role you have as a father like you gotta you guys really have to understand that all fatherhood on earth is derived from god the father like you have real authority in your home and if you know how to apply that authority your whole family will follow your lead and they will love you for it it's not something that you're lording over them like a tyrant it's something that they will embrace and want to follow your lead one thing yeah. uh, to consider though is uh protestant in-laws and i'm just i'm saying that hoping my protestant in-laws are not watching this i have protestant in-laws they, they they ask me questions about the faith all the time and never I, but the thing is they aren't like hardcore protestant my in-laws are kind of like protestant name only where their church and easter 
Christians, you know, so it it works out good because whenever they have questions of the faith, they don't even know there's much of a difference in Catholicism and Protestantism. So it kind of works in my favor. Yeah, I mean, I would never I would never um, advise a young man to marry or not marry a young woman because of anything that the in-laws do the in-laws actually don't yeah. matter because it's all about this is the other thing about that's central to polarity it's it's about you and her and you know ultimately getting to heaven but but the way you do so this side of the coin if you're not a, a religious is through sexual attraction and just be like it's me and you this is our it's it's my you know i'm the protagonist i'm i'm the guy and you're the help meet, and this is our little rowboat, and nobody, I mean yeah. nobody, gets inside the rowboat <laughs> unless they, they want to row with us. They want to row in the same direction. And it's really romantic. And you go and you have adventures, and if you, you know, you don't need to live in the same city as either of your in-laws, and you, you go get an adventure, you rely on each other. Me and Steph went to Italy and lived there because I was starting, getting ready to start the doctorate there. Our third year of marriage, and that was the best thing we ever did because it's just so romantic. I mean, the problem with, christians but especially catholics is they're just not romantic enough and that yeah. that's the the biggest draw aesthetically anyway um the the biggest wound from the feminism stuff is it just destroyed polarity how opposite we are and how crazy attracted men and women are to each other when they do stuff right and then you you throw in stuff like body positivity and it's just awful by the way there are people talking about amish in your chat this is not a cutting edge term for it this is this is like four, four years old it, it became it, there have been like six iterations since amish it went i'm to pretty mormon. sure we started amish we went to well, mormon well but, no we call we call the we call the, the people of the old covenant the amish to avoid the sense no, I mean, everyone everyone dude yeah. that was very that was like 2020 that's I think so that's true. when we started. We got Jay Dyer saying it. We got a lot of people saying it, dude. Oh no, no, no. That's that's very old. That's oh, very. Right. I mean, that, that's good. But a lot of people were were very into calling it Amish. I just call it the long. Amish because I figured there's there's no like Amish anti defamation league to come after. <laughs> like they never. Who an Amish person is going to complain about what I say about them sure. online? And then 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 there's Mormon. There are all sorts of words. But um, yeah, yeah that, that's anyway. I saw. Um, yeah, I, man. All right. So what, was there anything in that conversation you wish you had gotten to? Because I remember you saying beforehand, you were like, I have an approach I want to take. Because I know you pointed out how uh, men men going and living this manosphere advice is basically just a gay lifestyle. It's like the cruiser lifestyle. But was there other things you wanted to get to that? Because Tim ended it so abruptly. He was like, all right, we're just ending it now. That was it. And I was like, he, like I know Tim has so much more to say here. Well, I wanted to debate. I mean, I, I like to debate. When I when I do a debate, uh, you know, you know, it's all laid out. Um, syllogisms and and uh, propositional logic and stuff like that. And I just got to do none of that. And I drove. Uh, that's another thing about Steph and I. We never, ever, ever we can be arranged. Stay away from each other for a night. I just don't like it. I'm, it it's it's anxiety inducing. Once you get married, to be away. I also don't like flying, so I drove up to DC like in a clip. With with my with um, Nicholas Stumphauser, we had a horrible time getting the hotel room they arranged for us, um, and got a bad night's sleep. I I was like basically no no sleep. You can tell I'm super tired there. And then we we were gonna throw the camera and roll his face, and and then you know spend one more night and and come back. And it was a whirlwind trip. And I, it's all that driving 30 hours in the car or whatever. And, and not only did we not get the, the cameras in Rolo's face with us talking more, frankly, but one, they didn't let Nick film. And then two, I didn't get to debate. They anymore. didn't let him wait. They didn't let him film. They didn't let him film. No, it sucked. It sucked. Well, we were going to, he wanted, we wanted to film them filming us, you know, like we, we got a French documentarian, a Parisian doing a, documentary that's that wants to do a big thing this is like the biggest channel in parisian television coming to do a thing on me and steph in may and um nick's good nick's like this is dope because yeah. this makes you know our film bring him on is he there with you tell him to come and hang nick yeah is he with you yeah nick you want to come out here come, come sit and hang what is it to sit in the background and out Side real fast. Oh, he went outside. Uh, is he? All right. When he comes back in, tell him to come in. Just tell him to come in. Yeah, he's just chilling. Yeah, Nick was just in the background there. I was so tired, was like Anthony himself. and Rob. I was so tired in that thing. And I was like, okay, I want everything I'm saying to be fire. 
um, because they're not going to let me debate. Yeah. And, and Rolo is not going to do it. He's like, oh, we agree about everything. I'm like, no, we don't. But um, so at that point, I was just like, I'm just going to make everything interesting. So I was just, Nick was sitting over here. I could see him in my field of vision. I was just like, he hit me with some interesting points to say, because this ain't going to be no debate. And so he was just like, remember this line, remember this line. He, I mean, he was a director. That's what he was doing. Yeah. He was directing me. So that was cool. But I was, in general, the answer to your question is I was very sad not to go have a debate. And I guess we're going to do it, hopefully, on Zuby's I, channel. I don't think Rolo was the guy to do it with, man. I think he... Because he's too, he's, he's like me. He's a little too amicable, you know? <laughs> he's not, but he's not, I don't know how much of his content you've watched. That's only, that, not, that's not, not how not he is. Much. He's, he's macho. That's, that's, everyone was saying, no, we've never seen Rolo like this. He just, he's known as the godfather of the red pill. He's been doing this for two and a half decades. His book, um, the, the Rational Male, has tons of, of, of really, really truly, you don't hear me say this often. <laughs> you don't hear me say this often. Truly, offensive stuff truly yeah. anti-christic stuff that um i'm like look i'm gonna i'm gonna eat this i'm gonna eat this up and spit it out man this is yeah. bad he says to keep your wife in because he's been married like 27 years keep your wife in dread and that's why he hangs out with like it's like flirt with the waitress in front of this is the best person i know this is my favorite person i would go to, if somebody puts their hands on her, i'm getting locked up you know it's the lib quality says i will go to war and you want me to put this person in dread, like flirt with the waitress? Uh, hang on. He hangs out with like a gaggle of whores at, at his place oh in, God, in Vegas. Keep your wife in dread to keep her scared and to keep her commoditizing you. I'm like, this is like a cheat code. This is, oh, here's Nate. What's up? Miss, what's up, Mr. <laughs> like, bro, this, is a, this isn't a very professional show. Just come and hang, bro. Just, just, <laughs> just come, come in. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, man. Uh, yeah, because I want, I want to get into the documentary, but I, I want to actually point something out. All right, so Tim and I talk a lot behind the scenes, and, uh, like, there's been a couple of times where I've had guests on just talking about, you know, converting people and bringing people into the church. And he's like, yeah, but, Aunt, like, what are you bringing them into? Like, what are you converting them to if they don't have this foundation to go and build a family where the husband is the head of the home and things like that. Like they you really are bringing them to some kind of a shell of Christianity. If you don't have the most foundational tool, which is the building block of Catholicism, which is the family, right? That's right. That's right. I mean, do you guys think that I'll ask this to Anthony, Rob, Nick too. Do you honestly think that, okay, we have, we have the one true faith. We have the one religion that's got all the answers. This is different from talking to Tim Tim Pool and and Rolla Tomasi and Ian, who is a, a, a dear heart. That guy, he's like he was still friendly. Yeah, he's got a good heart. He's just not well equipped for the conversations. Like he was very friendly. Do you guys yeah. think that with our shared one true faith, that it's not like a repository of knowledge that that that's like an embarrassment of riches that the church is just embarrassed about I know we talk about the the Latin mass is like you know repository of riches that everyone's you know Francis is embarrassed of. yeah I know but there's like a huge cadre of folks that are yelling about it and that's good I I, I like yelling but but that's not the case with something far more important than which liturgy you go to it's the single cell of society and and the, the way that your kids aren't raised in a dysphoric home which 99 percent of the kids are you know a, a you know self gender hating home and they don't see romance between their parents the fundamental force of the universe romance that creates life a little yeah. bit one too many glasses of wine do you guys not think that this is just I mean, can, can we just talk about the elephant in the room? I, I don't know what your audience is like. I, I, I'm opening this up to you. I, I know what I think Nick will say, but he's a young guy on the hunt, a young single guy, and um, very romantic guy. And I just think it's just so sad how romance has been killed, more in Catholicism than even in, I think, Orthodoxy or, or Protestantism. What do you guys All think? All right, so that? I got people in here asking, <laughs> somebody even super chatted, that because this, all right, so Rob and I had a, a, a disagreement a while back about co-sleeping. These, these are parents that allow their children it's, to sleep in the bed. I'm not trying to bring it funny up is, What's funny is we actually don't have a disagreement on it. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. It, it, it just got. It was. A, it was the way it went about it. It turned into yeah. some tense thing. But my whole point with um, with the co sleeping thing was, it it's so important that the spouses have intimacy. That if you're allowing your kids to stay in your bed, 
to, you know, beyond breastfeeding. Like, I think breastfeeding your child, but there's nothing wrong with that, of course. But my point was, like, as the kids get older, there that could destroy intimacy in the marriage. Like, ha- your kid, your marriage has to come first, and your children will benefit from the fruits of that marriage. And, and a lot of people like, made it like I was obsessing on, on sex that episode, but that's not what I was. I'm just, the importance of making sure you and your spouse are intimate, like regularly is such an intricate part of your marriage that you could see couples fall out of love because that area kind of falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. What are you, what are you going to do, Nicholas? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Sex is good. (laughs) You're not, you're not married yet, Nick. What's, what's that? You're not married yet. No. No. Quite, quite unmarried. Oh man, how old are you? Twenty-five. I know a guy who's running a matchmaking service. You might want to. Uh... <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. All right. So let's get into the Nick, documentary Nick because the guy running it. <laughs> made it. It's his idea. He's Tim, also like IQ one ninety or something. So he yeah, Nick's, not even Nick's behind that. I'm He's, also like eighty gorillion degrees. I'm like dripping. Bro, <laughs> no, nobody sweats more than me. First of all, I just got back from Miami. I, I go to Miami to go meet my niece. My my little sister had a baby and I wanted to go down and meet my niece. We go down there for four days and it rained for three of the four days. We had one day in the sun. But when I get sunburned, like I'm I'm wiping my head the whole show just because I'm like my, my yeah. face feels like it's on fire. But um What's it called? All right, so let, let's get into the documentary. So Tim sends me like a like an eight nine minute sizzle reel a couple months back, and I was freaking blown away. Like I can't, I, I thought this thing would get gobbled up by like a bigger entity, uh, just from seeing the sizzle reel. Has has the whole documentary coming along? Why don't you give everybody like a little synopsis of it? It's it's called what what a woman is, right? Yeah, just to be as grammatically confusing as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So you saw you saw the twelve minute, eleven minute, forty five second. To be precise, uh, <laughs> get it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, cool. Yeah. We. I don't know. I feel like we had a healthy skepticism about whether or not it would be gobbled up. We knew that if we lived in like a just world full of non non evil deluded people, and they saw that, that naturally they would want to purchase and distribute the film, but. I mean, as you saw, Anthony, there's a lot of stuff in there that's going to make the establishment media outlets like wildly uncomfortable. Well, well, we could see what just happened in the past couple of days with the Daily Wire, right? So any, anybody that keeps saying to a crisis king, we're doing that discussion on locals in about 15 minutes because that's going to be a spicy conversation. But you could see just how they how how. I don't want to say cowardly because there are like I really do love Knowles. I really do like Walsh. Like I, I I think those guys are great, but you could see there's this timidity behind actually addressing anything that could offend. Like, like what is a woman was great, but like, yeah, like even liberals thought that was great. It's like, yeah, okay, you guys can't define what a woman is. But to actually say, no, 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 this is what a woman is, this is where her roles actually will be fruitful and things like that. You're going to offend a lot of people. It doesn't seem like a lot of people have the you know to 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 go for it you know it it seems like it was just too much for maybe some of them to grasp we i don't know what how much we can say but it was it was um uh yeah i don't know how much we can say what 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 is a woman is the the film you're talking about by daily wire yeah this was pitched as what a woman is and it was pitched as a sequel and it was um it was very, 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 very close to being a sequel. It's just, um, as as folks in the, the Catholic space know, there's no budge in like my brand. There's no budge in Nick's brand. I mean, he he, he his his uh, last film was died suddenly, which was made over a very very short amount of time. I won't tell you exactly how fast, and it was 50 million views. So we're just not. Is people people aren't going to be shocked to hear me say this prepared to to change a freaking corpuscle yeah. of what's essential to a project i mean accidents fine but but uh, essential properties not a corpuscle and so we offered to not not only not only daily wire but um all the other biggest outfits um 
had conversations with them, not just like sent them an email, like negotiated, discussed, <laughs> sent contracts, all that kind of stuff. And this is what we want. And, and like kind of banging on the, the table and they're like, cause we'll do, you know, two, two of them were basically like, we will do whatever we can to get this film. But in the final edit, you know, um, you guys said that what a woman is, is, is thin. Um, <laughs> is that, is that, can you budge on that? We're like, we don't budge on anything. You know? We don't budge <laughs> on a In fact, we picked that word on purpose. <laughs> right. <laughs> what if you say not overweight? No, thin, thin. And so that's the thing. So that's um, here. We want it. Here's an option. Here's what we want. Uh, they said the numbers are right. We just need to know you'll you'll fudge on a few things. Boys and girls out there, if you want to do creative stuff for a living, you can it's it's not if you have some talent it's not that easy if you're willing to be a pimp but if you're like no that like george costanza says this is the show not any other way and we're gonna stay or like like sly you know you should have pitched it as a documentary about nothing <laughs> yeah, the show about nothing. And maybe they would have taken it. Then. New York uh, people of the Old Testament. No, no, no. We, we we have friends. We have good friends at at um, Daily Wire. Not just not just Knowles, but people in the brass. And they was this was supposed to happen, and it was very very close. It was really kind of us that w was just like, um, you know, we sorry we we can't change X, Y, or Z. And they were like, well, we, we can't do a deal where you guys don't give up the final edit. And so we were like, it's all right. Well, we'll, well we already have funding. Um, so we'll just we'll just go and we'll um, we'll just make millions on our own. Dude, so, all right. So where's the project right now? Do you got you guys still raising funds to get things done? Like what, what's going on with it? Yeah, well, pre there's basically three stages, pre-production, production and post-production. We're closing pre-production and entering production within seven days. Um, if Tim Pool had let us film. I, I, that I, dude, I'm actually like disgusted that he would not let you film the segment of you. Like, that's just like a cool B-roll to run. You know, it's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. You know, Tim yeah. sitting on in with Tim Pool have this. He could have like maybe used that little excerpt where you really did hammer him home with the... You see, know, with you, the, you, the you, get it. you got a vision, Anthony. Maybe maybe you got a, a director in, in you somewhere there. Um, <laughs> and that's what I was that, thinking please. too. But <laughs> no, that's what I was thinking too. It was, it was a bummer, but I'm hoping that maybe some round two iteration with Rolo on, on mainly the disagreements that Tim and Rolo have can be broadcast in some i don't know how some way that i get to film that i think he would be wants, great. you want it to be live I'm it's like, gotta yeah, be an in-person thing like that would make that would make it so much better to have it in person man anthony i need your number i need you to <laughs> 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 well, Zuby um, only does online i think well, you'll see you will see a thing you know what was funny though i asked as soon as tim finished very abruptly everything very abruptly so abrupt. i was like yo man show me some because you know i was a i was a, a skateboarder not yeah. not um not like pro he's like pro level flat ground his yeah. flat ground tricks are second to none better than a lot of pros i mean he's very 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 good oh wow and he was like i i don't skate on fridays and i was like <laughs> oh okay like he said it like this he goes Fr fridays after filming are sushi and poker and I was like, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. I don't watch skateboarding. <laughs> like, watch skateboarding. Well, that's good. I don't watch it on Fridays anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. No, so he was like, do you want sushi and pokers? And I was like, um, I mean, I'll take some sushi, but I don't I don't know. I'm not getting a super like extemporaneous fun vibe from this. So I was like, maybe I'll do poker. I started talking to Ian about music and Ian was really friendly, but they're just, it was, it was a weird, I mean, not weird, bad. It was a big house. <laughs> big 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 house and they're just people like emerging from different wings of the house and i was like oh i didn't know they were here the whole time like with locked wings and stuff um tim didn't live there but after the fact um you know i was just like wow i i, I feel i was very tired and i i did have sushi but i i wasn't <laughs> in the mood for, for poker because it wasn't like a super convivial natural um um thing fraternal thing so i was just like oh we're gonna we're gonna go um hang out with nick's like like high in the services uh a member of washington dc 
people. So we, we, we oh, yeah, because Nick, you probably know a lot of people over there after the last documentary, I would imagine. Yeah, well, now it just sounds like I'm a fucking fed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you not us. <laughs> your, your family, can we say that? I just. I mean, well, now, now what's true is Nick's actually not way fan, more exculpatory than what you made it sound like. <laughs> well, I just, I just know, I just the land because died suddenly was like, holy cow! Because you didn't, you didn't realize how many of these articles were just popping up. Like it really was pretty enlightening to just see, holy crap, man, something's going on here, you know. And even, even those uh, the interviews with all of the, um, uh, what the hell, like the guy, the. The guys who take the bodies apart when they die, the what are the morticians oh, and stuff yeah. like that? Was, yeah, it was just wild that whole documentary, man. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, it was quite the experience, and I, I actually think that this, what a woman is, could go bigger because not everybody got vaccinated, but everybody deals with feminism. Yeah. It's it like feminism is at least as big as COVID was. We're like, kind of nobody didn't have their life impacted in some way by COVID. Everybody is affected by feminism when you realize that feminism is all the things that we say in the film, like down to the minutia. I don't know, Anthony, you saw the sizzle. Like, maybe you can look at it through the lens of a normie. Do you remember anything in there that, I mean, it's basically most of it that do you say. It's been a while since I saw it. I, like, I'm, I'm actually wondering, like, I'm hoping you guys got some interviews that we weren't expecting and stuff like that. Because I know you guys use a lot of B-roll of certain guys. I'm not I'm not sure those are guys you actually got into the, the documentary and stuff. But just the, just the way you guys presented it, I was just, like, so excited to see it. Like, I cannot wait till this thing comes out. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get a lot of interviews and. Actually, How are you guys going to release it? Are you going to do it just like you did the other one? Just release it to the to the public, or are you going to? No, it'll probably be for rent on Amazon Prime. That's you actually, can, dude. I, I think you can watch uh, it on your TV. Yeah, yeah. dude. I'm just, I... Man, I, it's it's got to be tricky to figure out how to release something. Why did you release Died Suddenly like that? You just wanted to expose as many people as possible to it. That was primarily the case, but also the stuff that I can't talk about. Basically, the the structure in which it was funded, it was advantageous to release it for free via Rumble on Stu Peter's channel, as opposed to any other mechanism. And I'm glad we did. Um, you know, Stu, Stu was very courageous to release four films that I made. Watch the Water, These Little Ones Died Suddenly in Final Days, all in one year. Um, but with this one, I want people to be able to watch it on their televisions, which you couldn't do with What is a Woman... You couldn't do it with Died Suddenly. You have to like cast it and then there's a delay and all this nonsense. Like I just want people to sit down and watch it like they would watch any other doc. Are you afraid about Amazon possibly like banning it? I think I have to it's imagine if anything that would be good. Well, it's not ironically as scary as third way to to make an address of first wave gender dysphoria, you know, which is feminism. Uh as it is to do third wave gender dysphoria, right. which is far less sweeping, yeah. affects far fewer people, you know, orders of magnitude less. So it's kind of a sweet spot. It's a nice sweet spot to be in. You can you can it direct, is. you can do stuff. I, I do content all the time on against feminism. I couldn't do that if I I wanted to make content against third wave gender dysphoria. And, and Michael Knowles says the exact same thing. He's like, this is weird. We're going more to the heart of the problem when we address feminism. Feminism is just... Um, functional gender dysphoria. It's women thinking they're men. Um, yeah. it, YouTube has not got it in the algos yet to to shut that down, to shadow ban it. So it's it's kind of a sweet spot. And if, it's, it's been that way. If I had to call my shot right now on what I think is going to happen is it will be on Prime for a short period of time until a shitstorm arises. It'll get taken from Prime and that will be sufficient market research data for the people that passed on us the first time to say, oh, you can make that much money with it, yeah. and then they're going to scoop it up. That's my prediction. I'm surprised they want you to eat. Oh, man, I guess so. I guess even, you know, th there's going to be certain things that you say that it's just, I mean, modern conservatism is just, it's a very, they have themselves been completely, yeah, they've been completely 
affected by feminism themselves. So it's, there's, I mean, you, you even see like every, I mean, Trump's looking at female VPs and RFK Jr. just announced his female. Like I, I, I really, I think just the conservative movement, when I see Lauren Boebert, like I want to strangle somebody that I think it's a mortal <laughs> sin to vote for that woman. Oh my God. I really do think you need to go to confession if you cast a vote for that one. I think you're better off with an AOC because at least she's telling you what she is. This other yeah. Lauren Bobart will sit there and tell you, I'm going to tell you about family values while she walks out on her husband and goes to a movie theater with some guy she just met. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's so true. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. I, I think that's a, a decent guess for what could happen. What could also happen is just it gets strangled, you know, Two days after it gets released, it's or, or they just you know, Amazon Prime doesn't allow it to come out. I just don't think the reins have been on people who are attacking feminism yet. Yeah. I think they're like, good luck get getting yeah. <laughs> back in the bottle. I think that's yeah. what they're like, and it might appear as like, well, okay. So two two additional details here. First, it might appear like we're pissing in the wind with this and they're like yeah go for it like you really think any i like that point you know that you really think anything's gonna happen like yeah you can platform this film here you look like you know some men's rights activists basically yeah but the second thing is is this film is not going to be died suddenly about feminism which is to say this isn't uh leftist hate watching prawn that i'm making uh tim and i are making a film about love it's a love story it's a lot closer to like a Hallmark movie with really good offensive premises than it is died suddenly, which was making a, a stark claim about science and yeah. WAP and depopulation. Oh, I'm so happy that that's the route you're going because it yeah. really like, to, because I think like if you even watch the mass of the ages documentaries, that first one where they actually show the, the widow and stuff like, like a story that you're telling like that is such, it's actually yes. so much more effective, you know. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. This isn't this isn't the sizzle that you saw, Anthony, is not representative of how we're going to tell this story. It's representative of what we won't budge on within the story that we're telling. Yeah. Thematically. Thematically, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So how can how can people help you guys out? You guys got a you got a place that people can donate to help you guys out, or you guys are all now we're we're done. We got yeah, we yeah. got I I look, I put out a call. So we had um executive producers a, a good sum of money from um some of the executive producers of uh sound of freedom tragedy struck them personally um we we let them we let, see, we let them walk away Steph, i see steph's making friends in the chat what'd she say <laughs> you definitely are abusive and privileged for you sorry to this channel i freaking love your wife dude she's hilarious you need to name me and Lillard, <laughs> bye bye me i use it all the time I'm like don't let the door hit you with Gosh, a so fragile yeah, so yeah, so such a, frangibility this woman said she was a, a woman's health care specialist and that she didn't respect her job and i was like nope. no no i don't no, i don't <laughs> go home go home be <laughs> mom <laughs> scurry off scurry off to the kitchen oh, but um, so yeah no we, we the the personal tra tragedy struck for these um family it's a, a good good catholic family who are executive producers on sound of freedom we said no no big deal again just this is my approach to stuff i i know i know that at least this project is right and god will fund it so i'm like that's fine the next day i took it to my channel and we'd replaced almost coefficient a uh, lar large sum of money with with you know three or four donors within the first hours and then we just shut it down we said no 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 donations there's you know we're we're taking equity um investors because yeah, it's, it's we going to make a pile of money and yeah we were selling profit share yeah not, oh that's oh great not yeah. donations so yeah the, the people it was a legitimate ghetto. investment um you know the people who put their money where their mouth was uh if this if this goes gangbusters they're going to be extremely well rewarded um yeah. tim and i have both approached this with a a spirit of detachment from the how just as long as it happens as long as we can do it you know and both of us were kind of like if we can make the whole movie and and just not lose money we're over the moon happy like get the film exists it's out in the world people can watch it and we're not like poor because we chose to make yeah. it that's a win-win-win which at this level of, of filmmaking when you're we have you know you when we haven't sold out 
when you haven't sold your soul, that is the win. And yeah. I don't, I don't think people really realize that that there's not a whole lot of money in not selling your soul. Like, yeah, <laughs> you can kind of get by or whatever. But I was Tim and I were talking about this that like, I think God can damn you with success. And just look at rappers, and yeah. all they want is. The, you know, they're Epicureans. They want pleasure and power and women. And then they make millions of dollars and they immediately dispose of that income in a way that ensures they're going to hell. Happens to a lot of people, man. Money, money and, and fame are dangerous, man. It is. <clears throat> so it with, I told Tim, I was like, I think God just like loves us enough that he, he doesn't want us to be burdened with, which I don't know. It sounds like cope, but like it I, I, so. I <laughs> it sounds I like cope. Mean it, you know, I it's like your humility, bro. Well, but we could have done this fifty different ways where we would have all, Tim and I would have already been written six figure checks from big companies making just insipid movie about well seven seven figure seven figure. Yeah, yeah I just don't know if you and I would have. You'd have had to tone it down yeah. incredibly. It would have just been con ink, you know, machinery. Yeah. It's just not worth it. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this thing moves the conversation. Like <clears throat> the Overton window, I'm so sick of it shifting to the left, to the left. I'm hoping that this movie comes out and oh. <laughs> resets the whole conversation. Yeah, it's a oh. it's, it's kind of a tactical nuke. It'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll do that. Or the case for patriarchy in, in film form. Right, and exactly. The, the case for patriarchy has already shifted the overtime. I mean, look look what everyone's talking about. This Knowles blurb this book. He's been a good friend to the book. Uh, you know, the our friend in the brass at Daily Wire was like, this This is going to be interesting. But, you know, we were making big claims. 2024 is going to be the year ex ex widening the... In human intersexuality pushback on feminism and he didn't believe it and then he's like yep no you were right and um you know it's literally basically Knowles's absorption of the case for patriarchy back in 2021 and um I, I think what happened was a simple little happenstance he got kicked off of uh youtube for whatever two weeks whatever it was a week because of his attacking third wave gender dysphoria, which no one cares about. I mean, do you really care about like guys throwing on dresses? It's so lame. The oh, real bro, gender I, dysphoria, listen, I, it, it's I, so boring. I'll tell you right now, even conservatives make such a big deal of this thing, right? It's like, oh, oh what they're teaching your kids and this, your kids are going to, if you have a, <laughs> a masculine man as the husband and a feminine wife as the mother, your kids are not going to suffer from this crap. Like well, and won't. don't put them in school. That's the other thing. It's like every time yeah. I send my child to this school, yeah. they get raped and indoctrinated. <laughs> every day I put them in the bus. They go there. They come home. They have porn. Their teachers yeah. are giving them porn. What should we do? Yeah. <laughs> can, can somebody please solve this? <laughs> yeah. What? Why? What do I do? Stop sending them. There. Don't send them to the whorehouse. Yeah. What? Well, so, like, what people don't realize is feminism is the original gender dysphoria. This is just playing out to its logical conclusion. Is what we're seeing in modern culture. It's just it all really does go back to that. For and what's crazy is you came out swinging with case for patriarchy then steph comes out with her book and everybody in the in the mainstream catholic media was oh my gosh this is so offensive and then i started seeing people that i won't ma mention their names kind of saying the same thing a little later on you know and it's like you do see that you know you, you struck a nerve with this whole topic because i do see other people picking up on it after the fact and trying to claim oh, it as their 2023 own. no everyone now everyone's embarrassed to be um associated with even defending first wave feminism that was the norm before a case for patriarchy came out and and ask your husband came out it was the norm to say first wave feminism is good but after that it got bad and yeah. then and you know i took took issue with them um, in in carrie grass's book she's all over implying first wave feminism is good and then you know these books come out and now everyone's embarrassed to be associated with that boomer boomer neocon perspective and everyone just ends up absorbing it with a, a radioactive name or whatever, you know, and, and I mean, you see a similar phenomenon with um, this this guy on that Twitter Spaces last night, 
going as Standis Owens. Um, you know who that was. I won't mention yeah, even yeah, yeah. the last name on your channel. But yeah, he's just <laughs> influenced he, this this kid. He's about Nick's age, not a kid, 25. He's influenced so much of culture around um, foreign policy and, and other aspects of um, financial power. He's influenced so much, and they still will not let you say his name. But now, ever even now, even Charlie Kirk is America first. Um, what's yeah. up with that? That's that's what we're gonna happened. we're gonna talk about him in the next show because he's got he's a weird he's a weird one. Like he, I gotta be honest, I didn't actually know the like I my first time hearing the word Groiper was from you because you were talking about something and you were like you were like yeah yeah, yeah the Groiper is that and I was like what the hell is a Groiper you know and I wound up like discovering him through just hearing that phrase on your show and he says so many things that are so based and then he's like this neo not neocon he's not a neocon at all he's very america first but he's so politics oriented and i'm like maybe this kid just hasn't been jaded enough yet like i don't give a <laughs> crap about politics man i don't know this is the first election where i literally don't care i think he no i think he likes culture i'll i'll, I'll just say I, I um yeah i've talked to him a few times and I'm, he's supposed to come on my rumble channel he's very very likable and very mature now and even the way he yeah. comported himself with jeremy boring last night I thought it was so amazing. man he's really yeah he's amazing. mature beyond his years so now some of the the groipers can get a little irritating like even when i said the thing on tim pool where i was like contraception premarital sex uh whatever fornication, fornication. These, these are all fake and fake and skittles um, yeah. They were like, "Oh, NJF said that." I was like, "No, no, no! Look, look, I like N <laughs> I like NJF, but I, I'm I'm 43. Not, I've been saying this since I was him, yeah. Bro. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would say lasagna's tasty. Nick, 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 I just said lasagna's tasty. Yeah, These they, kids, some of them think he invented lasagna as tear. I like pizza. It's like, no, these are very old propositions. Are 85 years old. <laughs> 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 I've been saying this. For 55 years. Yeah. Do you remember Nam? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But okay. I, so I like I so like him. I, I find him very. Yeah, I do too. So Sean's saying he he knows it's not a political solution. He just wants to influence the culture as much as he can. Yeah. So like what what I see as yeah, all right. Yeah. So let's let's bring it back to the to the whole manosphere versus red uh red pill. I mean versus patriarchy thing. Like I don't think we're going to convert the country with that message what i do think is you'll it, it will take three or four generations of small conversions of real genuine catholic families raising their families the way that you're pitching that will have that will be a foundation to build on after all this other crap comes to an end because dude i don't know how much longer this thing lasts like just everything it, you could just feel like we're coming to the end of a story the west is just falling apart around us and i think your approach is the only answer, which is just save as many marriages as you can so that there's something after this whole thing crumbles. Yeah, my faith is in much more in the Zoomers than in millennials in, in Gen X. No one ever talks about Gen X. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're mostly Zoomers. And um, but but really, you'll start getting the flowering, the fruiting of these good ideas that the zoomers are open to because things are so i you know screwed that i think you'll see it in generation alpha but this it's it's not it's funny because within space and time people think what i'm trying to sell rollo rollo said it at the end and tim oh it's just so hard it's not going back that way man it really is it was it's not me or it's not the case for patriarchy or what a woman is or even the healthy critiques endemic to the red pill it's just um it's just people are the sick of phenomenology it. of geist sorry to be hegelian it's just things are going back there it, it's all of human history has been patriarchy power to fathers beautiful family men and women love each other they're attracted to each other god made men women god made men first and then he made women because man was lonely and it's natural to not be a shitbag to your wife. It's actually yeah. natural to not put your wife into dread, but to be nicer to her than everyone else. And it's yeah. natural for your wife who was built as your glory, man. You're literally, man is the glory of God, woman is the glory of man. For her to be like, I don't, I don't care about this other guy. I, I wanna do everything I can do from your physical comfort to your moral comfort, to your spiritual comfort, to down, down to whatever, because we're best friends and I was here 
to make your projects work. And that's just nature. It's nature. So yeah. when they laugh at me, I laugh back at them. It's too easy to turn this ship around. You think it's hard, but I think it's easy. Yeah, you guys ask why. I ask why not, like Russell Westbrook yeah. said. I, it's it's well, easy. I, I, you know, I, we'll get I the credit. See, you do see the younger generation is just, they're just like they're a little bit. And I don't know if I, it's it's because I'm in a bubble or something, but it's like what, what they'll show you on the media is all, you know, Gen Z is 20% LGB, whatever. But I don't know, man. Like I look at my son and his friends, they're all based, bro. Like they're all just like, it, I really do think there's going to be a swing the other way. And not just that, but like my son's friends are starving for God. Right. Yeah. Like I, I take these kids away. We'll go do a weekend up and up and up in the woods and I'll take them quadding and stuff. And these kids are starving to hear about God. And it's it's like a hunger that's built into them because they've just found emptiness in the culture. But here's the thing. There, there's um the reason Protestants have always been better adjusted in America is because demographically America was built for them. So they knew how to coexist in the world, but not of the world, because this is the new world and it was basically by and for them. So they weren't these dorky, weird, like bad three-piece suit fitted geeks the way Catholics always have been in America that are trying to be in the world, but not of the world. That's always what Catholics were, just these kind of geeky, queer $3 bill guys that are like, oh, but we have the full truth. Protestants, yeah. whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, we do have the full truth, but Catholics can't just be normal. Like the guys can't just be guys and like, no, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, I, I do like this. This is what I do. I, I'm a guy and I'm Catholic rather than I'm a Catholic guy. Protestants always have that better. The Zoomers are getting that because it's more like a battleground now. Yeah. The culture is a battleground. So they're like, well, first off, I have to be able to survive battle. So I have to be a guy. I have to be able to be tough and talk how guys talk and um, not have this kind of gynocentric Catholics, Catholic space where the women sort of handpeck the men into talking like women. And then they're like, oh, yes, yes. So uh, yeah, like the holiest yeah. guys talk like men. This is why, why all of the best pre-war priests were all like Irish boxers. You, you think these guys talk the way, um, you know, low T henpecked Catholic men now talk? No, not at all really holy guys are just guys and they're like this is the, the mission field yeah ironically yeah. As, as francis said and that's what the zoomers seem to be coming home to because they see the exigency you know they see like catholic even trad catholicism you know what we say the subset within the subset the truest iteration of the faith is all about not not suits and like beards like, you know, which aren't even done right, like bad <laughs> beards on weak chins. It's like, dude, it's only manly if this, if you fill out the suit with muscles and your chin, your jaws like, then, then a beard's cool. It's not cool if you're just a fatty, you know, like you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do this stuff the right way for it to be cool. And even then it doesn't matter whether you have a beard or not a beard. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of traditional Catholicism I've found to be performative with like, that's why like, I'm not, um, uh, and I'm not knocking guys that like to do it. Like I never was going to be the guy on here with a suit. Like, it's just, I, that's not, <laughs> I feel weird. You know, like we even have, we have Bishop Schneider on. I'm like, all right, I'll put a button down on, but like, I can't not, I mean, I'm dude, I'm a freaking construction worker from New York. I'm not going to start pretending. I'm not going to start smoking a pipe and having a bourbon next to me while I do the show. It's just, it would be so inauthentic for me to do that. I mean, if that, if that suits you and that's where you belong, cool, but that's, I don't know. That's not me. And I, I find most yeah. people that I get along with aren't typically uh, like that either, you know? Bourbon's gross and cigars are gay. I just have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, the cigar craze bothers me. Uh, I just have maybe too much Bill Clinton, Mono on, on the head, but I never, I don't <laughs> like the taste of bourbon. I like, I like amaretto. I'm a, we're, we're Paisani, you and I, uh, Anthony, and I, I like stuff that tastes good. And um, yeah, I just, I, I'm you, the first rule of being a man is you got to be yourself. That doesn't mean, oh, yeah. the Lord made me a sinner and I'm not going to leave my sin. You leave aside your sin, you leave the gun, take the cannoli, you leave the sin aside, but we're all <laughs> unique. And that's the thing about the saints, they're all interesting and vibrant and their own person and not some IQ 104 trying to be like everyone else with their mimetic yeah. desire. You're a moonshine guy. 
Yeah. <laughs> this suddenly turned into an episode of Sopranos, and I feel out of place. Yeah, <laughs> listen to me. I can do <laughs> Tim, Tim, Tim's show is uh is the office and Frasier. I'm the Sopranos guy, all right? <laughs> I'll do Sopranos trivia all night. Um, I like all right, listen. Too. Yeah. We're, we're gonna go. We're gonna go talk Nick for uh, the yeah, you know. We're gonna go talk Standis Owens, Christ is King, Daily Wire stuff because I want that conversation to be able to just be had. And over here, it's not going to be able to. So, guys, jump over to locals. We're gonna go over there. Um, I don't know. You want to pr promote anything, Tim? I just wait for wait for fall of um, fall of this year for w what a woman is. It's it's gonna be a big deal. You'll hear about it. Yeah. So don't worry about that. I'm not I, worried. I would about like to get an advanced screening so I can review it for you guys and help you guys promote it. I mean, I, I we'll would love one. to do whatever I can to help. Go get one. Yeah. I know a guy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And look uh, out for the, the right, actual Tim versus Rolo debate hopefully soon on yeah. the, I, he's kind of stalling, but I, I want it to happen on Zuby. He'll he'll be willing to do it if it's on Zuby and Zuby said he would do it. What what do you think about going on like the whatever podcast? Like I I have very mixed feelings about it because like I do think it's cool when Knowles goes on there and he, you know, he owns the feminists and stuff, but such a big issue I have with shows like that is like these dudes are literally promoting Abort. pornography. Yeah, like, no, I'm, I'm fucking that. I'm not down with it. It makes it makes Steph uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable. I would I, be uncomfortable filming you because it would just be like breasts, and I'm like, I yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, but for as much as people think, well, with patriarchy, Tim and Steph, whatever, like. I'm uncomfortable with um with boobies everywhere, with TNA everywhere, and Steph's would. It makes Steph uncomfortable and it would be a compromised position. It would be selling me short. And I, I told him, I was like, I told Chase because I'm, I'm very good friends with Chase and I'm like, he wanted me to go do the four on four. I'm like, look, man, if we do it on whatever, no whores, no whores. Yeah, around. Yeah. I, I'm not going to do it with boobies yeah. around. That's a selling short. It's a pornographication of the principle. That's a, um, judaizing of the principle i'm not going to do that well you're also like no the guy who's saying i would not suffer a woman to teach like can we not invite them to teach and yeah, like a men's discussion like let's <laughs> let's actually talk in a conversation where there's not these airheaded pinheads in a conversation where because what that show is actually doing is promoting these girls only fans and it's like i won't even watch clips of it and it's like I, I don't know. I, I have very mixed feelings about when I see guys I like going on. They're like, I really like Chase. I love Knowles. I think those guys are great. I just think there's got to be a better outfit, uh, outlet for these conversations to be had where it's not, you know, just girls making money on OnlyFans. From well, to Chase's credit, to Chase's credit, he left because uh, what's the guy's name? that runs? Brian. Brian was basically starting to sell immoral products. And Chase is like, peace. I'm out. I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm glad he's yeah, Chase, Chase is a Chase is legit. He has a lot of integrity. He has uh, a lot. I've, well, I've watched him change over the, like since his first appearance on there. Like he always was like you know he was the, he was a base guy going on there. But like I'm watching him, yeah, yeah. really get a little deeper into like even following. So, like I don't, I, I'm hoping it's from from the guys like you influencing him and like bringing him deeper in and stuff. But he's he's really going more Christ centric than he was before, you know, before oh, he's just... you wait and see, wait and see, wait yeah. and see. I've been me and Chase talk a lot. We're, we're finishing St. Joseph's Novena tonight or tomorrow night. We're, we're doing together. Um, you know, I'm like a big brother to him and um, you're going to see uh, he, but man, that guy just has a lot of integrity and uh, I really care for him a lot. And he has so many good ideas and I think he's inter very open-minded. And he's good, at, he's good at presenting his ideas, like especially on that space last night. Like I was amazed at how well he, because sometimes like even here, when I'm asking you questions, it's like I'm, I'm like getting held up in my question as I'm going to say, like, I don't know if I could just perform on spot like that. It's very, a lot of pressure on you. I, I want to. I want to actually address this because I shot off a tweet the other day, and I was like, maybe the church needs to separate <laughs> from civil marriage. And I didn't really actually think through the implications of it. I was just like, I don't know. Maybe the church should just kind of like stop being witnesses to public marriages. And everybody, they, everybody was like, bro, you're completely undermining the whole idea of what marriage is. So, question for Tim: I'm a tried Catholic, 16 years. You visited my church in Costa Mesa once. I'm not a fan of Rolo in the least. My question is, are you against getting married only in the church and not legally? If so, why? So that would be basically what I said. Like, should the church 
sacramental marriage be separated from civil marriage? No, I haven't. You know, I, I've, I've have still um, dalliances with with um, economic Austrian libertarianism, but no, not not that. Not that um, aspect of libertarianism culturally. It it has always always been an important um, alliance between the state and the church. And there's always been a, a, a conceptual suite of ideas bound up in the family that are negotiated. Uh, uh, that are a negotiation between the church and the state, and marriage is one of them. So I'm not I'm not libertarian on on that issue. I, I think. Um, you have to move to, you have to move to a good state. You got to get out of, got to get out of blue states. I, not, not now, not tomorrow, but within the next five years, all of you guys, all my New York and, and California friends and family got to get out. And then, um, we have to see a return of states rights, a uh, huge states rights guy. And state law, remember, um, state law bears the police power in the 10th amendment. Um, that's where you want to see moral legislating is in state laws where, where the state legislatures are supposed to make laws that befit the, 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 the local, the, the cool and deliberate sense of the people, uh, as Madison says in Federalist 39, not, not the Congress, um, congressional national laws, continental laws should be essentially, um, the bare minimum. But you should see the moral legislation like marriage and stuff like that at the state level. Like, like you know, we saw with uh, the overturning of Roe versus Wade. That's that's state level stuff. And um, yeah, and then we were supposed to bring the fight to the states and instead the other side did. And you're just seeing it getting bad. But you can find a good state where they don't do that because you do see it on both sides. You see a lot of states enacting heartbeat bills, but then you see the other ones going, no, we're going to enshrine this in the state's constitution. And we're going to. So, yeah, moving to the right <laughs> geography is very important. I would say, like, maybe there will be a time where sacramental marriage will get separated if they try to start forcing priests to perform immoral marriages. It's the only yeah, place I, I, just, I think that that shows people get the government they deserve, as jo uh, Jefferson said. I know most of your audience has been kind of trained to hate Jefferson, trained to hate Ayn Rand, uh, they're, they're, but there's there's real wisdom in in folks like Jefferson and Ayn Rand, and um, people get the government they deserve. And if your your state is so bad and you're always complaining about tyranny from your state level, then you need to um, move to another state or. Uh, well, there's a flag called an appeal to heaven. Wait, I, I won't get you kicked off YouTube, but you know what that is. Um, so, you know, I mean, but but that's that's a far away place. Hold on, I'm going through Brandenburg jurisprudence. I, I, I want to avoid incitement. That's at a far off place. The, the the first set of solutions for the next decade is um you know move to a state that's still red. That's why I moved to the reddest state in the union. You can still drink an open open can of beer as you drive a car here in Mississippi. I'm hammered every time I drive to Tim's house. That's a joke. All right, so wait, let, let's, let's do this. I, I want to make sure we get it. I want to make sure we get it. All right, so here's the problem. Church does not want to assert itself in state or national laws. Libertarian views in Austrian economics is really the best way to combat the church and the state these days. The only thing I'll say about libertarianism, because I kind of do like the idea of like, get the government out of everything. But what I, my heart, my biggest issue with libertarians themselves is they don't stand for anything, right? So the conversation you're having with guys like Tim Pool and Rolo, Tim Pool's playing around with libertarianism, and it's like, dude, well, you have no moral foundation whatsoever. Right, like you're just, right. you're, there's nothing to build your moral foundation. Like, there's no such thing. Well, it's like the whole thing with the, with the, the T issue is everybody's making it like it's just about children. It's like, oh, we don't want to let children do this. It's like, no, we don't want to let anybody do this. Yeah, like they're, yeah. We but should, that's state law. I'm not, I'm not a libertarian when it comes to the Tenth Amendment, the moral legislating force of the state, the police power, always has belonged to the state in this country, not the national uh, Congress. And libertarians, the problem with them is they tend to be nude surfing gay wads like <laughs> Ron Johnson, whatever his name was. I mean, they're just fruitcakes. But but I'm talking about um, Austrian economics, which was deeply, deeply influenced by. Uh, the school of Salamanca, and and they, if you if you read Rothbard and and um and and a lot of those guys associated with Mises, they'll tell you, oh, we were reading um the um 
School of Salamancans, uh, some of the very, very coolest Spanish uh, Jesuits <clears throat> before yeah. they became Jesuits. So, but, but no, the solution lies in um, legislating moral, uh, the libertarians wouldn't like this part, moral legislation at the state level, basically uh, federal libertarianism at the congressional level. Congress isn't supposed to do anything. If you look at Article 1, Section 8, there are like 16 things Congress is allowed to legislate on, and it's like coining money and like building post roads. It's not, it's not supposed to be, um, you know, banning the prawn. But you should ban the prawn at the state level the because state that's level. where you're 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 with your countrymen. Your real countrymen are the people in your locality. Isn't the state also part of the witness of the marriage? So like, doesn't it contribute to the sacrament itself? Because the state's yeah. saying like, yeah, we're witnessing that yeah. you guys are getting married. Yeah, that's why I'm not libertarian on that. Also, yeah, I mean, yeah. well, there, there's also the, the you know the the sword and the purse arm of the state. You have a similar thing with the two swords theory, which is medieval. Catholicism, you, you, the state is supposed to be, well, one of the witnesses. So, yeah, it's, yeah I'm not for that. All right, um, all right. Let's, Rob. Let's leave it up on Twitter for anybody watching on Twitter. They could watch the whole show over on Twitter because you, you know we could get away saying anything. So we're going to leave the show on Twitter and we're going over to Rumble. So if you guys want to check out the rest of it, uh, we're ending the YouTube section. We're going to get into some spicy stuff. So, all right, take us out, Rob. Nick's already sweating. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about the Amish now for, for half hour. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs>